Today, we're going to translate Ruth chapter 4, concluding our Hebrew series. Now, this week's focus is going to be on textual criticism. Let's dive in. Uboaz Allah Hasha'ar Vayeshev Sham Behine Hagoel Over Asher the bear Boaz Vayomer Sura Shiva Shiva Po Peloni Almoni V Ooh, what is that? V Vyasar Vyasar Vayashev. So then Boaz, um, go up, went up, went up to the gate and sat down there and behold, the Redeemer, hmm, passed by the the redeemer produced cal participle cal participle masculine singular absolute so the redeemer cal participle why is it treating over here as because it's the wrong we want the there we go. Pull along one's way, move through. Is this one or two? This is one. Pass over. Pass by. Go over, pass over. Overstep, contravene. <clears throat> and behold. I think it's just going to be passed by. The Redeemer passed by who I think this is going to be when when instead of which why does it keep pulling up the wrong thing? I'll share well I mean that's the right route but we want not even this one. This is the Hatef uh, Path Act. Hatef Path Act? No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, okay. That which can be used as a conjunction, which seems to be the case here that so that as if boaz spoke interesting pl perfect third masculine singular to speak boaz this is weird he spoke boaz and said This doesn't make sense. I think I need some coffee. <clears throat> there, where, which, whom, where, whither, whom, whereas, whom, where, wherein, So when isn't stated here as a possible translation, wherein is though. So the Redeemer passed by, wherein Boaz spoke and said, uh, 
Uh, imperative, sore, turn aside, come across here. Turn here and sit here. Pillow knee, pillow knee, a certain one. Used when the proper name cannot or should not be used. Almoni. Certain one, certain place. Almone, not numbering, formally connected with Peloni, as we see here, which always precedes a certain place. So the adjective here, Peloni, doesn't mean a certain man. It's pointing or being used with Almoni. So it's a certain place. Sit down here in this spot. And he turned and sat. Okay, is there any textual variants here? Doesn't look like it, not in the textual apparatus. The first one we have is verse three. So we can move on to verse two. Vaichach asara anashim mizikne ha'ir vayomer shivu shivu fo vayashavu. And. Hmm. Ten men took from ten of the elders so Boaz isn't mentioned here but we're, we've got third masculine singular. He took, this is Cal. Uh, he took 10 men of the elders. This is still construct of the city. And he said, sit here. And they sat. Okay, so he's he's bringing a council together. All right. Now verse three. Verse three, we have a textual variant. <clears throat> we'll take a look at it. It's pretty brief. In Hebrew, we have Vayomer la Goel Hel Kat Hasade Asher La Achinu. Le Elimelech Mak 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 Machra Naami Hashava Misade Moav. But <clears throat> in the Septuagint, <clears throat> excuse me, instead of Machra Naami, the Septuagint reads. In Greek, e dedote noemin. So that means in Greek, or uh, Naomi was not able. Or Naomi was not able. So let's read it in Hebrew. And he said to the Redeemer, uh, 
to the Redeemer. Chelkath. But this is construct. So the plot of land. The plot of land. The portion of the land which belonged to so this is a possessive belonged to our brother Elimelech Makar to sell carry out trade Third feminine singular. Naomi is selling So Naomi's the subject here. She's selling the portion of the land that belonged to Elimelech. Naomi is the one who returned from the field of Moab. So the Septuagint is saying uh, E or actually that's not E or that's uh, that's the relative. It's saying which was given to Naomi rather than Naomi is selling. In fact, I think I can look that up here. And Boaz said to the Redeemer, the portion of the land, which is of our brother Abimelech, e de dote noemi, noemi which was given to Naomi. So that's what the Septuagint has. And so part of textual criticism is the analysis of the Hebrew text with all data in mind, including Septuagint information. So it's interesting that the Hebrew says Naomi is looking to sell the Septuagint says that Naomi was given the land. That's it. So why one versus the other? Which one would be the original? Well, the editors of the Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia, um, and, and it's really going back to the Leningrad Codex, they feel this is the original. She's selling it. Now, I'm not arguing for one over the other, uh, but it's interesting that the Hebrew has, she's looking to sell, and the Greek has, uh, it was given to her. A oh, one note on the, look at the textual apparatus for this textual variant in verse three. You'll notice in the Hebrew text, there is the letter A and it's twice. One before uh, Makra, one after Naami. When you look at the textual apparatus down below, it says A-A. -A. And what that means is this entire phrase is the variant or substitute or something to that effect. So the entire phrase is replaced in the Septuagint by E de dote Noemi. Noemi. Okay? So that's how you read that. Uh, sometimes the textual variance is going to be a single word. Sometimes it will be an omission. Sometimes it will be um, an addition. Sometimes it'll be a substitution. Verse four. Va'ani am amarti amarti egle 
uh, Azen Azen Ka Azen Ka Azen Ka Azen Ka Azen Ka Le Lemor Kine Negev Ha Ha Yosh Yoshvim Venegev Zikne Ami Im Ti Tig Al Gaal Vaim Lo Yigal Hagida Li Veeda Chi Ain Zuld Zulat Ha Leg Leg all the Anohi Acharecha Acharecha Vayomer Anohi Egal. Whew. Now there is a textual variant here. There are several actually. So all the way down here is the first variant. So the Hebrew text says Yigal. This is Cal imperfect, third masculine singular to redeem. So he's saying, but if you will not redeem, well, the Hebrew manuscript. Uh, there are multiple manuscript versions that read with the imperfect second masculine singular instead of third masculine singular. Well, second masculine singular makes sense, right? Isn't he speaking to him? Doesn't it make sense, especially with this over here where it is second masculine singular. If you will redeem, redeem. But if you will not redeem, so why, how do you account for the third here suddenly being in there? Let's see if this is uh, addressed in the word biblical commentary. So Ruth four three. Or rather verse four. Almost all modern translations and commentaries read the second person here following a number of Hebrew manuscripts and all the ancient versions. The emendation demanded by the context must be made even though no cogent explanation for the third person reading can be offered. So then why does it appear? So this must be the original and possibly a mistake. Rudolph's explanation that the verb was originally a marginal comment since the verb itself is unnecessary to the syntax simply pushes the enigma one step further back for it is equally inexplicable that a scribe should add a marginal comment in the incorrect person. <laughs> so no one knows. No one knows why. It doesn't make sense. And that's why it's probably the original. It might have been a mistake as an original. It just doesn't make sense. Now, this is in the body of Word Biblical Commentary. Sometimes they offer whole sections of textual analysis before they get into the actual commentary. So let's page up, page up, page up, page up. Let's see what we can find here. If you will not exercise your right of redemption, it just says see comment. So that's it. It really didn't help. 
But there's another variant. And again, you can tell because the variants are marked with A, B, C, so on and so forth. So in the same verse, shortly after, verse 4, we have Li Veda. Veda. Right here. This is the cohortative, first common singular, from Yada to no. I don't know where the ayin is. So to me, and I may know. You can see the Kathiv Kare here. And Aid Ah. So it has that pedagogical hey there. So in this case, we have the Kathiv Kare in the textual apparatus. So Kathiv meaning what is written, but multiple manuscripts. Follow the Karev Veeda. Veeda. So when we look at uh, the the word biblical commentary here, so the Kathiv is the imperfect, the Karev or Kare is the cohortative. Since the previous imperative, Hagida, tell me, carries the cohortative, the kare seems to be the preferable reading. So what was original is probably the imperfect. But what was understood is the kare, the cohortative. So here's an example where the kathiv kare shows up. So here's an example of where the kathiv kare shows up in the textual apparatus with our textual variants. <clears throat> and I. said Gala. I will uncover your ear. To open someone's ears, similar to to open one's eyes. In or in other words, to inform him. And I said, I will inform you to, in order to say, by Negev before the ones who sit and in front of the elders of my people. If you will redeem Cal and perfect second masculine singular, redeem it exclamation. It's an imperative, but if not, Third masculine singular. But if he will not redeem,
Hithil imperative masculine singular. From Negev. Announce in form. Give evidence. Hithil imperative. Imperative meaning second masculine singular. If you will redeem, redeem. Second, 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 third, meh. Uh, but if he will not redeem, declare to me, declare it to me, and that I may know because ain nothing non non-existence null and void no pursuer Rodef Ion. There is nobody for there is nobody except you to redeem and I after you And he said, I will redeem. Now verse 5. Byomer Boaz, Byom Kenoth Kenoth Ka Hasade Miyath Naami Umeeth Ruth Hamoav Bia Esheth Hameth Kanithi Lehakim Shem Hameth Al Nachalatho. There is a variant here. It's actually two that are listed. So the first one Umeef Naami Umeef. The variant is umeef. It's not a phrase, it's a single word. The textual apparatus says quo quoque quoque. What in the world does quoque mean? Well, the D that's in front of Quoque means it's from the Vulgate. The Latin Vulgate. So Quoque here is Latin. It's not a hyphenated word. It's one word. What's more? Not only, even, actually. So instead of... And, from, with. Let's take a look here. We'll look at the notes in the translation. Then Boaz said, on the day you acquire the field from Naomi, you acquire reading. This is the Kathiv Kare. Ruth, the Moabites, the wife of the deceased, in order to raise up descendants 
name for the deceased on his inheritance. Uh, and he said, and Boaz said, when, so on the day you buy, on the day to buy you, you on the day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, also from with Ruth, the Moabite woman. Surprised he doesn't talk about the textual variant here. He completely skips over it. You acquire a reading. Yeah, he's looking at the Kathiv Kare. He's not even looking at the textual variant here. What about new interpreter? Let's take a look. Yep, this does not address it either. Keep looking. Uh, the NIV translates it and root and from Ruth the Moabite test. So it's treating Umeth as Vav mean and then F direct object marker. That makes no sense. NIV AC does not cover it. <sighs> I got nothing else, no other commentaries to help with this. So go figure. Together with. By the side, besides. Out of, from. Look at there. So this is this is our translation right here. Naomi from the from the hand of Naomi and from Ruth the Moabites. Whereas the Vulgate takes it as from the hand of Naomi Gom eth Ruth also Ruth. I'm going to look at Latin quo K. Let's see what else we find because quo K also. Ruth quo K Moabita Tem. Also Ruth the Moabite woman. Okay. So the Vulgate has quoque. So this textual variant in the Vulgate replaces the Vav conjunction here plus me. So ume changes it to gam also eth Ruth. So it's taking this first syllable. It's actually two syllables, huh? Umeth, Umeth, and it replaces it. Boaz said, on the day that you buy the field from the hand of Naomi and from Ruth, which makes no sense, which is why this is probably the original. Because Ruth didn't own anything. So it's harder to explain why this would be here if it wasn't original. No one's going to change it to this to clear things up. It makes no sense. Uh, Ruth, the Moabite, Moabite woman. Uh, the wife of... 
the deceased. Cal perfect first common singular. Kanithi. Could also be Cal perfect second masculine singular. In the Kare. So Kathiv, Kare. But it doesn't make sense. Why would it say I I uh I bought to stand it doesn't make sense that Boaz would say I I bought it the day you bought it I bought it to stand I don't think this is really I think it's to raise names of the deceased so dis descendants of the deceased Al Nachalatho. Raise above Nachala. Hereditary property. Phil. To erect, to put up, to take out, to keep, to fulfill, raise, help up. Raise someone, nominate. Raise, erect, obtain. To raise the name of the deceased over his inheritance. So we're going to translate this then. Mm, translating this is really tough. You acquire Ruth the Moabites, the wife of the deceased. Most commentators have opted to amend Umaeth either to Gam Eth, so the Kittle 1937 Biblia Hebraica, third edition, and BHS, Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia followed by most commentators or to Ugam Eth as per New Century Bible Commentary you got Gray, Gettleman, Hubbard however emendation may no longer be necessary if accepted that Uma Eth consists of the conjunction Vav plus enclitic Mem prefixed to the direct object particle Eth the same combination can be interpreted as the conjunction plus enclitic mem in other passages in the Old Testament. The archaic grammatical formant called the enclitic mem of certain function was generally reinterpreted by later scribes as a plural marker. The orthography was revised to match, so mem became, among other things, im and the oral tradition was reshaped. 334E. Hebrew grammarians have only recently come to appreciate morphemes as diverse as the object marker, F, and the enclitic mem. No modern grammar further has begun to gather together the wealth of individual studies that have been carried out in a more traditional framework. Thus, it is not surprising that some students know little about the case functions and some commentators make egregious errors in their interpretations of prepositions. For our purposes, therefore, we are content to say, stay with the more traditional bases than those of discourse grammar. That did not help. 5N29. The evidence of the El Amarna letters suggests that this suffix is etymologically composed of an accusative ending A followed by an, an enclitic M. Keeps referring 9.8. Nine point eight. Nine point eight. Enclitic mem. A variety of external evidence has led scholars to recognize in the biblical text a particle m, often associated with the genitive. Whatever shape the particle took, perhaps m after a vowel or 
me or ma in all cases. It seems to have been used at the end of a word, and so it is assumed to have been enclitic, meaning to have leaned on that word. Only the consonantal mem is preserved since its meaning was lost in the course of the text's long transmission. The mem became confounded with other common morphemes formed with mem, such as the masculine plural suffix, im, the pronominal suffix, am, the inseparable preposition, mean, etc. As a result, it must be detected behind the Masoretic text by irregular irregularities and anomalies associated with final or initial mem. Enclitic mem is used in sufficiently varied ways in cognate languages to make it certain that the earliest forms of Semitic must have known more than one form of this construction. In Hebrew, it sometimes has an emphatic force, while at other times it serves as a morphine for indetermination. It is seen in connection with almost every part of speech, including verbs, nouns, pronominal suffixes, adverbs, etc. Most common are its uses in the middle of the construct chain. The enclitic mem is common in poetry. The examples most easily seen are those involving external evidence. So they point to 2 Samuel 22, 16. They point to Psalm 18, 16. They go through Genesis 14, 6. 11, 1, 2, D. So basically, we don't know how enclitic mem works entirely. It's apparently still under investigation. I don't know. So, Ma'eth and Ma'yath Ma 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 are used elsewhere with Kana to express the nuance to acquire from someone. All the ancient versions and virtually every modern translation and commentary have read the Kare, you acquire. This has almost in invariably been done on the basis of the traditional view of the book that Ruth in 3.9 calls upon Boaz to carry out the legal obligation to Levi of Levi marriage by grounding her request for marriage in Boaz's identity as Goel. Ruth did not actually use Goel in 3.9. BD and Sasson have argued for the Kathiv, I am buying. BD followed by Sasson has based his argument against Kare on the grounds that the near redeemer could not have been ignorant of a legal obligation to con contract a Levirate marriage, for it is not reasonable to suppose that the near redeemer was any less cognizant of his legal responsibilities than Boaz was. Nor could he have been any more ignorant of Ruth's existence than Boaz was. Therefore, it was Boaz's announcement that he was marrying Ruth and that the purpose of this marriage was to raise up an heir for the property of the deceased that caused the nearer redeemer to change his mind. Boaz announces that he is marrying Ruth means that there was no order of preference according to which family members were called upon to take on the moral responsibility to marry the widow of the deceased and raise up descendants for the deceased on his inheritance. But it is just as reasonable to suppose that the moral obligation or that a, that a moral obligation that carried with it substantial economic disadvantage vis-a-vis -vis the support of the widow and the providing of an heir for property, which without an heir one would oneself inherit, would devolve upon near relatives in a fixed order of priority as it is su to suppose that a legal obligation that carried with it substantial economic advantage, the redemption of the field, would do so. In point of fact, however, whether reasonable or unreasonable, 312 through 13 demonstrates that such a moral obligation indeed existed. All right, get to the point, bro. So in the end, he says, the Kare is the correct reading. <laughs> oh my gosh. All of that just to conclude right here. So, Kanothka, 
Or no. Connie Thee. Connie Thee. Should be read. Uh, Connie Tha. On the day you uh, you buy the field from the hand of Naomi. Kanitha, you must buy Ruth. Then you must buy Ruth. The Moabite. the wife of the deceased in order to raise a name for the deceased over his inheritance. Verse 6 Vayomer Haget Goel Lo Ucha Ligol, Li, Pen, Ashkith, Eth, Nachalathi, Gaal, Lech, Lecha, Ata, Eth, Geulath, Geulathi, Kilo, Uchal, Ligol. And the Redeemer said, Uh, not, I am able, I'm not able to redeem to me, lest I destroy or harm or corrupt. This is Hithil. Must I destroy, annihilate, exterminate, damage my inheritance? And then redeem to yourself. You redeem to yourself. Geula, right and obligation of repurchase. You redeem to yourself my right for I'm not able to redeem. All right, verse 7. Vesoth lifnim lifanim bayishrael al hagula va'al hatmura La Kayem, Kal Davar, Shalaf Ish Naalo, Vinathan, Le Reeha Reehu, Vizoth Vizoth Hat Uda, Be Yisrael. Now there is a variant here, verse seven. Very first word, Vizoth. The Septuagint, the Greek Septuagint, adds to dikeoma ke tuto to dikeoma. And this is the requirement. The regulation requirement commandment deed before. in Israel. So that's the Septuagint. Whereas the Hebrew text and this. <laughs> that's it. So the Septuagint adds a little bit more. Makes it a little more clear. Um, other texts 
including the Vulgate, seem to follow a different Hebrew tradition, Hamish, Hamishfat, the judgment, the ordinance. But the textual winner here is Vizoth and this. And this before Lifnim. Uh, be Yishrael, uh, bef before among Israel, over, above, ha, gula. So, this is our right of redemption here, right of purchase, right of obligation. Va'al, ha, uh, Hat Mura. So this is Tumura. Exchange. What is exchanged? Exchanging. So, and this was uh, the, and this before in Israel over the right of exchange and over or right of the right of purchasing and exchanging to to rise to get up all I don't think this is going to be word or speech here and this is the noun. There we go. Word matter. So so to is probably to resolve any matter. PL infinitive. PL. There you are put up, erect, to be valid, to confirm, make valid. So to validate any matter, to draw, a man drew, this is to draw the sword, oh boy. Uh, so shalaf. Pull out, pull off, take out. His shoe, not all, his sandal. And give Nathan to his friend, his companion, his neighbor, his friend, lover, comrade, companion, neighbor, one another, another. And this was the Tuuda, Tuuda. Testimony, gesture, confirmation, corroboration. This was the testimony in Israel. This was the con we'll say confirmation. Now, what's the textual variant here? The uh, there's one more textual variant, and it, it appears to omit uh, shalaf here. So then it would be um, this was in terms of exchanging to stand up or to uh, what did we say? Oh man, I gotta look it up again. <laughs> it's pl. To confirm any matter, a man uh, would give his sandal to his friend. But the winner, Shalaf, a man draws his 
sandal and gives it. Not sure why that one wins out, but that's what it is. Okay, verse 8. Vayomer Hagoel Leboaz Kinelach Vayishlof Naalo. Now there there is a textual variant here. At the very end, Naalo. In the Septuagint, it adds Ke Edoken Avto. Which is the same thing as Vayithen Lo. So the Septuagint basically clarifies he took off his sandal and gave it to him. Because the Hebrew stops short of that, doesn't it? It just says he took off his sandal. So, and the Redeemer said to Boaz, or and. Well, it's probably when the Redeemer said to Boaz, uh, buy for yourself, then he took off his sandal it doesn't clearly indicate who is taking off the sandal. I would say it's Goel. Goel took off the sandal. I'm not sure if the next verse will make that clear or not, but it doesn't actually make it clear who's giving the sandal to whom. Who took off the sandal? Who's who's doing that? Uh, it, I would say logically it makes sense. Hagoel's the subject here. The recipient is Boaz. The, but it's, it's not entirely clear. Verse 9. Vayomer Boaz Laz Kenim Vekal Ha'am Edim Atem Hayom Chi Kanithi Et Kal Asher Le Elimelech Veet Kal Asher Lichlion Um Chalon Miyad Naami. And Boaz said to the elders and all the people, You are witnesses this day, for I have but all which Elimelech, which belonged to Elimelech, and all which belonged to Chilion, and Machlon, from the hand of Naomi. Okay, verse 10. Vagam Eth Ruth Hamoavia Esheth Machlon Kanithi Li Li Isha Le Hakim Shem Hameth Al Na Nachalatho Velo Yekaro Yekareth Shem Hameth Meim Echav Umi Sha'ar Mi Chomo Edim Ethem Hayom. Now there is a textual variant here. Umi Sha'ar Mi Chomo. Towards the end there is different where the Septuagint seems to follow instead of instead of umi sha'ar it's meamo 
Mamo Mikomo from his people. So let's translate it and we'll take a look. And also Ruth the Moabite, wife of Machlon, I purchased for myself um, to my wife, to take as my wife. Uh, no, this is not Lakak. So I've, I have purchased her for myself. Um, to be my wife, to be, to be, it doesn't say my wife, but I'm going to translate it to be my wife to raise up the name of the deceased over his inheritance. Nifil imperfect. Karath. This is to cut, but it's Nifil. So he will not be. So his name, so the name of the deceased will not be cut off, eliminated, wiped out from the people of his brothers and from the gate and from the gate of his place. You are witnesses this day. So instead of uh, so that his name will not, will not be cut off from his people, from the people, uh, well, it's not, it's not Om, um, is it? This isn't Om, um, Me'ith, or Me'im. Let's take a look. With mean, Me'im, 70 times from having a connection with. So he will not be cut off from having a connection with his brothers, common masculine plural, and so that he will not have a, uh, or he will not be cut off from his place at the gate. But the textual variant reads, and it's, it's derived from what we see in the Septuagint here, verse 10, Ruth the Moabite woman, the name of the deceased from his brothers and from Uh, the tribe of his people. So with this textual variant, it's taking, it's making a parallelism. Me'im, me'amo. Me'im, echav, me'amo, me'komo that it not sever the connection with his brothers from his people. I want to see what WBC says in this one. WBC translates it as town. It's interesting. Residence. Region. Room space. He doesn't even address the textual variant. 
Oh, what is it? Somewhere in here. Ah! I don't know what it is. There it is. It's not a word. Bayomru kal haam asher baas basaar ve has kenim edim yithen adonai eth haisha habaa el beithecha kirachel uch uch Lea Asher Banu Shethehem Eth Beth Yishrael Vaas Vaase Chail Vaase Chail Beef Beef Ratha Uchra Shame Beveth Lachem. Now there is a textual variant here. The Haz Kenim Adim. This phrase in the Septuagint is Martires K E Presbyteri Iposan. Witnesses and elders said. But the Hebrew reads, And they said, all the people who were at the gate, the and the elders, witnesses, let the Lord give the woman the one who comes to your house as Rachel and Leah. which they built two of them the house of Israel and did great in Ephrathah and call the name in Bethlehem. So the Septuagint tries to clarify and all the people who were at the gate, the elders and the witnesses, all the people at the gate and the elders, Adim, they said, then all the people at the gate and the elders said, Edim, we are witnesses. May the Lord make... That's how the NRSV reads, but that can't be make, it's Nathan, it's give. Cal imperfect. Give. Hand down, allow, surrender, set, place, lay. So may the Lord give to the woman who is coming to your house as Rachel and Leah, who the two of them built up the house of Israel and did ah so now it shifts uh, uh, say you do 
great. You do great in Ephratha. So this is Cal Imperative. To do, make, manufacture, plant, put into effect, attach, make, make from, create. Give effect to do, to acquire. To acquire might, mighty acts. Power through a large family. May you acquire a large family in Ephratha and call the name. Call, shout, give someone a name. Absolute, cut off shame. That's what we have here, Vukharashem, to stand up as one who gives a name. May you bestow a name in Bethlehem. Cal imperative. And bestow a name in Bethlehem. All right, verse 12. The he. Bethcha ki beth peretz asher yalda tamar lehuda min hazara asher yithen adonai lich min hanaara hazoth. Uh, and it was your house as the house of Perez, a son of Judah by Tamar and the ancestor of a Judean family, which is named after him. Son of Judah by Tamar. Also, Levi Ritz situation. Whom Tamar bore to Judah and let your house be as the house of Perez, which Tamar bore to Judah from this seed, which the Lord may give to you from this young woman from where since immediately after more than because from without seed offspring descendants from the descendants that the Lord gives to you from this woman. It's not temporal, it's not local. Designates the material from which something is made. May. And may it be your house and may your house be like the house of Perez whom Tamar bore to Judah and may your house be from the descendants which the Lord will give 
to you. May it be, may your house be as the house of Perez. From the descendants that it's singular though, so I'm not going to say descendants. I'm just going to say seed from the seed that the Lord will give to you. from this woman from the originator by this woman the logical subject of a passive verb well this isn't passive okay so by by this woman which the Lord will give to you by this woman. By Ekach, Boaz, Eth Ruth, Vathahi, Vathi, Vathi Lo, Leisha Vayavo, Ele, Eleha, Vayethen Adonai La, Perion Vatheleth Vatheled Ben and Boaz took now this is Lakach Boaz took Ruth and this is the phrase for uh, to wed to marry so he took Ruth as his wife and uh and she was to him it to wife and she became his wife and he went to her that is they had sex and the lord gave to her conception Herion Herion from Hara Interesting Pregnancy Her Heron Pregnant Conceive Hara Conceive, be pregnant, conception. The Lord gave to her conception and she bore a son. Verse 14. Vatomarna Hanashim El Naami Barukata Aldonai Asherlo Hishvith Lach Goel Hayom Vayechara Kare Vayechare Shamo Bishrael. There is a textual variant here. At the very end, Shamo, the Septuagint reads To Onamasu, the name of you equal to Shemek. Shemek be Yisrael. In the name of you, Israel. I don't know which one would be the original, but we'll just translate it how it is in the BHS. And the women said to Naomi, Blessed, the Lord bless you. Mm. 
No. Blessed be the Lord who has not ceased to redeem you this day and Kara Nifil. I'm going to be here a while. Still not in Nifil. There we go. Summon, proclaim, mention. Looks to be proclaimed this day. And <clears throat> third masculine singular. His name. May his name be proclaimed in Israel. So the Septuagint would read, is not ceased to redeem you this day and has, or and may your name be proclaimed in Israel. Today, the Redeemer and to call your name in Israel. The woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who is, who did not. Who did not stop, who did not cease to redeem you today. I think they're saying her name. May your name be proclaimed in Israel. Whereas in Hebrew, blessed be the Lord, third masculine singular, the name. Third masculine singular, may his name be proclaimed in all of Israel. Who did not leave you without next of kin? Who did not leave you? It's Goel. Goel is the name to be proclaimed. Verse 15. Vahaya lach. Lemesh Shiv Nefesh Ul Kalkel Ul Kalkel Eth Shevathek Ki Kalathek Asher Ahavathek Yeladathu Yeladathu Asher Ki Tova Lak Mishiv, Mishiva, Banim. There is a textual variant here. Ahevatheka, or Ahevathek. The textual variant says, Sik L, multiple manuscripts. They have some sort of editorial. Ahavathek. So instead of a pathak, they have a comets. Sick meaning thus. But multiple manuscripts have ahavatha. Ah, ahavathek. So slight variation in the in the vowel pointing. Right here. As it stands, this is Cal Perfect Third Feminine Singular. And it looks like the phrase isn't even considered in WBC here. Yeah, it's not even... Not even addressed. Okay, and it was to you... 
to return shove life and coal pill pill contain sustain life and sustainment to return life and to sustain your gray hair Sheva Seva from Sieve gray hair advanced age is this return or restore to fill participle pillow Polo Hifil. Bring back, lead back. Bring back, drive back, reverse. Turn around, give back. Answer. Revoke, cancel. Convert from evil. Restore. Ah. Restore liveliness, vitality to refresh. Ruth 4.15. And it was in order for you to restore life and to sustain your gray hair that your daughter-in-law, who you love... Bears him whom he is good, whom you love, whom she is good or was good to you from seven sons so this is a comparative here's mean tov so whom she is better than seven sons to you verse 16 atakach naami eth hayaled Vat she the who be beheka vat vat hilo leomeneth leomeneth Naomi took the child, the young boy. and put him in her chek in her lap gesture of adoption in her bosom in her bosom and she was to him a guard, <laughs> a nurse. Uh, this is Cal participle feminine singular, attendant. That's kind of funny because uh, Ruth was the attendant of Boaz, but that was not Ara. Now we have Amen, attendant. Came to him as nurse. Seventeen. Batik 
Urena lo hash hash genoth shem lemer lemor yulad ben lenami vatik rena shamo oved hu avi yeshai avi David. They called to him, the neighbors. So the neighbors called to him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. called his name Obed. He father Yeshai, Jesse, father of Jesse, Avi, father of David. What does Obed mean? Obed means, well, it's a short form of Evid, which is to serve caretaker. Ve'ele toldoth paretz, peretz, holith, et hetzron. And these generations Perez Perez so these are the generations of Perez Perez Holid Begat Hezron so Hezron Verse 19, the Hezron Halid, Halid Eth Ram, the Ram Halid Eth Aminadav, Aminadav. So, and Hezron begat Ram. No, the son of Hezron. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, and Hezron begat Ram. And Ram begat uh, bin, uh, Aminadab. Verse 20. The Amin Ma the Aminadav Holid Eth Nachshon Venachshon Holid Eth Salma and Aminadab begat uh Nachshon and Nachshon begat Salm Salmon Salmon Verse 21 The Salmon ha Holid Eth Boaz Uboaz Holid Eth Oved and Salmon begat Boaz and Boaz begat Obed. And lastly, verse 22, the Oved holid eth Yeshai, the Yeshai holid eth David. And Obed begat 
Jesse, and Jesse begat David. And that's it. We've translated all of Ruth chapter 4. Let's put it together. Verse 1, Then Boaz went up to the city gate and sat down there. And behold, the Redeemer passed by when Boaz spoke and said, Turn here, sit down in this spot. And he turned and sat. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit here. And they sat. And he said to the Redeemer, The portion of the field that belonged to our brother, Elimelech, Naomi, the one who returned from the field of Moab, is selling. And I said, I will inform you to say, Buy it before the ones sitting down and before the elders of my people. If you will redeem, redeem. But if you will not redeem, declare to me so I may know because there is no other except you to redeem and I am after you. And he said, I will redeem. And Boaz said, on the day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, and then you also buy Ruth, the Moabite wife of the deceased, in order to raise up the name of the deceased over his inheritance. Then the Redeemer said, I am not able to redeem to me, lest I harm my inheritance. You redeem to yourself my right to redeem, for I am not able to redeem. Verse 7, and this was bef before among Israel over rights and exchanges to settle any matter. A man would take off his sandal and give it to his friend. And this was the confirmation in Israel. Verse 8, when the Redeemer said to Boaz, buy it for yourself, then he took off his sandal. Verse 9, then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, you are witnesses this day that I have bought all which belonged to Elimelech, Chilion, and Machlon from the hand of Naomi. And also Ruth, the Moabite wife of Machlon, I have bought as my wife in order to raise up the name of the deceased over his inheritance, so the name of the deceased will not be cut off from having connection with his brothers or from the gate of his town. You are witnesses this day. Verse 11, and all the people at the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. May the Lord grant this woman who is coming to your house be like Rachel and Leah, who the two of them built the house of Israel and you make a large family in Ephrathah and bestow a name in Bethlehem. And may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah by the seed that the Lord will give to you by this young woman. Verse 13, So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife, and he went into her, and the Lord made her conceive, and she bore a son. Then the woman said to Naomi, or rather, then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who did not leave you without a Redeemer this day. May his name be proclaimed in Israel. Then he will be a restorer of life to you and source of gray hair for your daughter-in-law whom you loved, whom she is better to you than seven sons, has borne him. Verse 16, Then Naomi took the boy and placed him on her bosom and became his nurse. The neighboring women called him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the father of of David. These are the generations of Perez. Perez begat Hezron, and Hezron begat Ram, and Ram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Nachshon, and Nachshon begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz, and Boaz begat Obed, and Bo Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. I hope you found this helpful. You've spent 30 some odd weeks learning Hebrew, biblical Hebrew. You now know your nouns. You know your syllables. You know your prepositions. You know how to handle verbs, various phrases. We've even looked at how to look at the textual apparatus, how to understand the kathiv kare. 
We've looked at so much and now you have access to and the, the ability to work through the Hebrew text of the Hebrew Bible. I hope you find it as rewarding as I do. I enjoy going through the Hebrew Bible and seeing it in Hebrew. I enjoy looking at the Greek text as well in the Septuagint. I also enjoy looking at the Greek New Testament. Looking at these original languages, looking at the original texts is a lot of fun. And it, it helps bring a whole new sense of intimacy to studying scripture. And I hope you find it to be similar. I hope you've enjoyed this content and you find it valuable for yourself. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Otherwise, stay tuned for more content. We'll start some translations of various verses soon. Until next time.